A young, beautiful woman gets given the terrible news she has inoperable brain cancer and only four months to live. The courageous Belle Gibson tries chemotherapy and radiotherapy, but no luck, so turns to alternative medicine to battle the disease. Thankfully, it seems to work, as she tells the world through social media. It's a truly inspiring story. Hundreds of thousands of sympathetic followers and fellow sufferers live every step of her journey and celebrate her success as she becomes the poster girl for the alternative wellness industry. There's an award-winning app and a cookbook. Belle Gibson has made it. Except it's all a lie, a great big lie. She doesn't have cancer, never did. Until this day, Belle claims unscrupulous natural therapists duped her into believing she was dying. But tonight, we have the proof that this is a lie too. Belle Gibson is not a victim. She is a fraud. Belle, are you prepared to tell the truth today? The yeah. whole truth? No little Absolutely. half truths, no gobbledygook. The truth. No, I've been really transparent. Um, For all her sweetness and light... Belle Gibson is not as she appears. I guess you could say... She's here to explain her complicated past, but one problem remains. I've tried. Every time she speaks, there's every chance she's lying. So just for clarification, are you prepared to sign a statutory declaration to say that everything you tell me today is the truth? Absolutely. There's nothing left to lose, and if that requires a stat deck, then I'm comfortable with that. I guess why a stat deck is required is because you don't have a good record on telling the truth. Do you? But as you'll see tonight, not even this was the truth. That's a lot of bad luck for one young woman, isn't it? It's a hell of a lot of bad luck. Just the start to an extraordinary and confounding interview. You talk about pain, you want people to send you flowers. See, I don't recall any of that. How can we believe anything you say now? Tara, I have lost everything. Belle Gibson was a strikingly sympathetic and inspirational figure to her legion of followers when she started posting her story on Instagram in 2013. She said she was a sick young mum who found her salvation in wholesome foods and natural therapies when conventional medicine failed her. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very well. A woman who defied the doctors who told her in 2009 she had an inoperable malignant brain tumour and just four months to live. Four years on, her followers lived every health high and low with her, and fellow cancer sufferers had new reason to hope. I have been healing a severe and malignant brain cancer for the past few years with natural medicine, Gerson therapy and foods. It is working for me. Do you accept the they... level of damage you've done to people's trust? I do. And they are feeling um, disrespected. They are feeling hurt. They are feeling betrayed. And your whole trade was on, on these poor people, that, that you inspired them, that they felt sorry for you, that you showed them a path. I mean, you profited from that. You gained from that in reputation and in income. I didn't trade in my story yes, or, in other, or in other people's lives. You did trade in your story. Belle, it's all here. It is It there. is all here. You know, you go on Instagram in 2013. I have been healing a severe and malignant brain cancer for the past few years with natural medicine, Gerson therapy and foods. It's working for me. It is. <laughs> and Except if any... you didn't have brain cancer. No, I didn't. No. But when I was writing that, I thought that I did, and I was feeling well. Yes, but even then you misrepresented what you thought was your truth, which was all a big lie anyway. I'm really sorry, and it hurts me, and I beat myself up every day for how I have uh, hurt those who mean a lot to me. 
for all her apologies, when you start to unpick Belle's story, you uncover a lifetime of deception and invention. The whole hoax started with the whole pantry, a wellness movement Belle adopted and promoted with the release of her world first healthy lifestyle app and companion cookbook. From the first page, you're touched by Belle's struggle for survival. I had a stroke at work. I will never forget sitting alone in the doctor's office three weeks later, waiting for my test results. He called me in and said, you have malignant brain cancer, Belle. You're dying. You have six weeks, four months tops. I remember a suffocating, choking feeling, and then not much else. But there was no real doctor, no doctor's office, and no conventional test results, as most people would expect and demand. It's highly questionable, but this is Belle's revised story now. She says in 2009, she met a man called Mark Johns, who told her he was an immunologist and neurologist, though no record of him exists. He had come to my home and went through a series of tests, and this was dubbed integrative medicine. So he comes to your home and he does some tests on you? Mm -hmm. He does. How did, what sort of tests? It was a box, a machine with lights on the front, and that machine was apparently German technology. There's a, two pads, two metal pads, one that goes below the chair and one that goes behind your back, and then that measures what I believe or remember to be frequencies. And what were the results? He said to me that I had a stage four brain tumour and that I had approximately four months to live. Why did you write in the foreword of your book that you got this information in your doctor's office, that you got this prognosis in your doctor's office? Because I think that being open and telling people the way that it happened would um, not be understood so and that people would be disappointed or angry for me, you know, not um, following what is the right way to go about this. So you lied because you feared you wouldn't be believed. Is that what you're saying? Um, it's not what I'm saying. Well, can you be clearer on what you're saying? I mean, you, you, you were absolutely misleading, weren't you? You said a doctor gave you this terrible prognosis in his office. Now, you've just admitted that you didn't say it was at your home and it wasn't with a real doctor because you thought I people believed would be he disappointed real... in you. No, I believed he was a real doctor. So did you lie to be believed is the question. I didn't see him in his doctor's office in Perth. You didn't see him in his doctor's office ever because he doesn't have an office, does he? No. Right. You claimed, also in your book, that you underwent chemotherapy and radiotherapy for two months. True yep. or false? At the time... True or false? True. Because at the time, I believed I was having radiotherapy. So, false. I believed that I was having radiotherapy. When he gave me medication, I was told that it was oral chemotherapy, and I believed it. It turns out now, if you believe Belle, that Mark Johns's treatments were alternative. But in her book, she describes them as conventional. I pulled myself out of chemo and radiotherapy. And takes pride in dumping them because of the side effects. My doctors freaked out. To heal herself, she embraces alternative therapies and eventually a new career and a new age celebrity is born. I was empowering myself to save my own life through nutrition, patience, determination and love. But today she has yet another reason for why she walked away from cancer medication. Very soon after I'd been started this treatment here in Melbourne, I fell pregnant. And that was a huge catalyst for me. In what way? Because I thought, well, if I'm going undergoing chemotherapy, then I don't want that to affect my pregnancy. Oh, so you stopped the chemotherapy because you were pregnant? 
I stopped the chemotherapy for various reasons. I didn't know. Truth, the truth. Tara, I'm trying to draw on information. No, no, don't draw on information. Just be honest. I am Please being honest, be honest with you. I'm trying to be open to what you're saying, but you were just muddying the waters with every answer. You set up a guy who's some quack, you're now saying, as a conventional doctor, giving you conventional treatment that is not helping your brain tumours, so you leave it. That's what you set up in your book, right? You didn't write it as you've just told it to me. You didn't write it who this man was. You didn't write that he came to you in your home. You didn't write that the chemotherapy and radiotherapy you claim to have is not what most people would have. You didn't write it like that. I wrote... You rewrote a history. I wrote five introductions to my book. OK, whose fault is it now? It's nobody's fault. Right. But that is a very brief version of my, of my story and my life. Coming up, you had three heart operations, you suffered two cardiac arrests, you died mm -hmm. twice on the operating table. Mm -hmm. Bell's year of disease. You had a stroke mm -hmm. and you were diagnosed with an inoperable brain tumour. Correct. But the new evidence proving her fraud. That's not melodramatic, that's straight out lying. It Extraordinary is. lies. That's next on 60 Minutes. <laughs>